What's up, y'all? This is your boy, Gentleman Jack, here with y'all for another episode of Hallways on BS. We got our boy, Soprano C, back with us this week. He ain't Steph Curry, but he's Soprano C. We got Steph Curry down there. We got our boy, Juso. And then we got our special guest, Matthias. I'll say it once again because he got two eyes in his name, Matthias. We got Matthias up in here, baby. Hey, What's the deal? Give us a little bit of in, uh, introduction on yourself, man. Just, just you know, kind of get our, uh, our audience a little bit caught up on you, man. Man, what's the deal? Uh, my name is Matthias, man. I'm happy y'all, uh, you know, let me. <laughs> 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 man, man. No, got... no, y'all cut that, but you know what I'm saying? It's my name. <laughs> <laughs> hey, keep going, keep going, bro. My bad, bro. Nah, but man. <laughs> I'm from the town, Kansas City. Uh, with my boys here, we all went to Lincoln, graduated together. So it's good to, you know, and rap with y'all on here, man. I like this thing that y'all got going. Cool, cool. I appreciate yeah. it, man. I just want to say, everybody, we've been good before we start off with this episode. Or everything be good, with everybody? Yeah, we've been cool, man. Look, heating up. Yeah, man. Okay. Good, man. Before, yeah, I, before solid, I start, just want to say Lakers and seven, but we'll go ahead and keep on going for the sake of one of our members on here. So I don't offend him a little too much. Right, so right, man, we got we got us a, <laughs> we got a good episode here today. So we got us a, a couple of uh really fun topics. Viewer discretion is advised. So our first uh topic is gonna be on views on a 50-50 household. Does it work? Our boy Matthias, I'm gonna start with you first, man. What is your opinion on views on a 50-50 household? Do you think it works? <laughs> man, 50. <laughs> this dude crazy. So 50, I think 50-50 is uh definitely a popular topic, you know, what I'm saying? especially on uh social media and our culture today. You know what I'm saying? And I think that it depends on what fits for everybody, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like as a man, you expect it to, you know, bear more, most of the load. And, you know, that's based on just what we used to, you know, and what people in our past have done and our families and ancestors and stuff like that. And so we feel forced to stick to those same, you know, saying norms. And a lot of times that might not work for you or that might not be best for you. You know what I'm saying? And as a man... You're really tasked with, so they say you tasked with providing and you tasked with, uh, my bad, y'all. I'm hot. You good. Let me start over, though. Oh, you so, man. Keep going. Keep going, bro. Roll it. We roll it. Nah, but so, you know what I'm saying? We expect it to bear most of the load or all of the load in some situations. And I think that that is. <laughs> Hold on, bro. <laughs> hey, while he coming back, bro. Uh, I mean, what you think? Can we define what the 50-50 household is? What is that? Did y'all sure. put fifty fifty everything down the middle fifty fifty? No. So from my understanding, yeah, it's like it's financial cost, isn't it? So the I'll just speak from from my experience. Fifty fifty is like mm -hmm. is kind of like a misnomer, you know. Okay. Word, word word of the day for people who don't know misnomer, but it's not it's not exactly that you you literally calculate every single thing and split it 50 50 to the to the penny and the nickel but it's more like you divide like the financial responsibility of the home as best as you can either like as even as possible which means you have a shared account and you pull the money into it or you do, mm -hmm. you split the bills and maybe that's not like 50 50 in terms of like dollar amount but you split in the responsibility across the board between the two parties or it's percentage based like if you make a certain amount of money more than the other person other person like the percentage that you pay you know is is relative to the income that you have but it's still like 50 50 in the sense that both people are, are putting in you know into the finances of the home on a level field that's kind of how i understand 50 50 but i okay. mean I, i'm sure there's some petty niggas out there that 
They're like literally counting pennies and they're like, yeah. Oh, I'm sure they exist. But isn't what you described, the second part, isn't that what everybody does? does? No. Like, no. 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 So I think that I think that the whole debate about 50 50 is that men are expected to be 80 20 or 90 10 instead of 50 50. And they think that 50 50 is sometimes equated to, oh, my 50 is less than your 50. It weighs less than your 50. And your 50 is really weighted more heavy. But it's 50 50 because we both doing what we're supposed to do. But I think that you can't really necessarily evaluate each of them each task the same you know what i'm saying like yeah there are some tasks that women may do more but they may be better equipped for that and men may be better equipped for certain tasks as well and i think that i think that the, the really base of it is back in the day men you know what i'm saying <clears throat> we lived in like a patriarchy bro so men dominated and so therefore yeah. we had more opportunity to go and earn money and so, therefore, we were better equipped to be the provider of a household. And so, when people think about providing, they just think about finance and money and stuff like that. But providing is providing leadership, providing decision making for your household and stuff like that. So, sometimes that may lead you to not be the primary breadwinner in the household. Like, bro, say you was dating Taylor Swift. You knew and you date Taylor Swift and you're about to get married. And you got a regular job. You make $100,000. You think you the shit. She make ten million. Yeah. Would it be smarter for you to try to compete with Taylor Swift to say that you the breadwinner to feel like a man? To say, oh, you know what I'm saying? I pay all the bills. Nah, you know what I'm saying? It would be smarter for you to get behind Taylor and find a way to, you know what I'm saying, benefit her in whatever way that you could do, like, you know what I'm saying, whether it's management, whether it's agent, whether it's finance, accounting, how do we invest your money? You know what I'm saying? Like my job, yeah. I specialize in investment. So I'm going to try to be the best, you know what I'm saying, investment manager of uh, your portfolio instead of trying to compete with you. That's dope. And I think, to, to your point, Matthias, too, I think, well, first of all, I think it's crazy because I feel like black people are the only ones that really had this conversation. And I think <laughs> every black person really just secretly wants to hold on to that money for themselves to be to be completely 100. Yeah. But, um, I think a lot of people like you, right, with like the traditional sense of the patriarchy or patriarchal system and like how men are traditionally providers and things of that nature. And that's what quote unquote makes a girl get in her soft era when uh, when she doesn't have to feel as masculine or do uh, the, the traditional task of a man. But also you get into the debate of like, you know, traditional men versus traditional women and like what we are now in modern society. But just personally, you know, I think um, if you're married, if we're married, then by all means, like I'm gonna take care of house and home, you know. But mm -hmm. if we're if we're just dating and like we just kind of like shacking up, we we this ain't forever thing. So I don't think I need to put forever a forever down payment on what I'm what I'm spending at that point. Just being honest, but if, if, yeah, if I put a ring on it, man, like no question whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think. Like Oh, go ahead. Now I'm just saying, like apartments, like yeah, if, if you we come and you stay at my apartment and I pay my bills, yeah, I'm gonna keep paying my bills. Like I ain't tripping about nothing. You can and go get some groceries or something like that. That's cool. But, like as far as like buying a home, like actually purchasing a home, like something that is expected out of marriage or stuff like that. I think that that should, should be you know a dual arrangement. Like you know what I'm saying, like because at the end of the day, bro, if I bought a home. And I'm the only one that put in on it, and I'm the only one that was paying the bills. If we get divorced, I'm going with that home. But it don't work like that. I can't make it like that. So that's, you know what I'm saying? It's stupid of me to go in and be like, oh, I'm going to go 100 out on this, and I don't have no way to say that you contributed equally or, or somewhat. And it's not necessarily about equality. It's about equity, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Equality is just we put in the same amount. I put in 100000 You put in 100000 It don't got to be like that because... I understand, like, you know what I'm saying? It is still, it's a little bit different. Like, yeah, there's women that's out here getting to it, but a lot of times men is still the high earners. And so, yeah, if you make 200000 and your wife make fifty, you know what I'm saying? Y'all not going to put it in the same amount. But if you make 200000 and your wife make 100000 that's 300000 Like, y'all got a lot more spending power to go and do something versus her talking about, I'm going to just keep my money 
and you just put in your 200000 because you make enough. Like, I just think that's stupid. Amen to that, brother. No, I I just, you know, for me, you know, my opinion on it where the whole 50-50 thing, like, say, for instance, like, you know, you're both starting out, you know, you're kind of building a foundation together, you know, and, and you know, things are a little bit harder as you're starting out and, you know, to work, you know, you might have to balance it a little bit. You know, but uh, but yeah, once once you're both doing good, I I just always just wonder, like, man, why is it a fifty fifty thing? You know, is it why is it a, a topic? You know, y'all both earning money, y'all both putting their money together, y'all both earn money together, and I would at least hope by you know, you know, you're married, but if not, you know, you guys are at least contributing to stuff together. So my whole thing is, after a certain point, it's like, why do I give a damn about this whole fifty fifty thing? We both putting in money, we both putting in the effort, and. Yeah. You know, it's building up together. So I, I think the whole matter of just where there's so much emphasis on this is dumb as hell, man. I just don't get it. It's like, who gives a fuck about that? <laughs> and, uh, and I, and to, to talk back to that, I think it's like going like to like traditional values and then like traditionally men were providers and things of that nature. And so if you, in your, in your vows, you say you, you protect and provide, you know, your students and help. I think that's what like is expected mm-hmm. of a lot of women. But also, I think too, not to not to say like I, I fall into this place, but like through through statistics of today, a lot of the earnings that are expected of a man aren't necessarily coming about with the with the career positions that they have because it, it's like in statistics like saying like a lot of millennials aren't earning enough to live in this city or that city. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the expectations that are put upon them are a bit, uh, like they're a bit unfair to be honest. So it just kind of creates like a, um, it, it creates like a whole just like conversation and system of just like, damn, am I making enough? Am I doing enough? I got to step it up at this point so I can like at least fit to like the standards of like today's woman. But that's not to even speak negatively about women whatsoever. I really wish we had a woman to speak on this as well, because I would love that and perspective. I think, and I think we would have to on, on that topic. But based off what you just said, though, there, that's another thing that I think that's a, something that's not um, brought up a lot, is that the, the way that the economy is nowadays, it, it can't really, unless you earn a lot of money to be able to work off of one income, it's, it's really not possible to work off of one income. And so that that's where I also just think of like, okay, you know, at the end of the day, we got to survive. We got to have a roof off our heads. We got food in that fridge and, you know, whatever else comes with it to where we can be able to continue to make money. So my whole thing is just, okay, at that point, if we're just surviving, you know, we're trying to make it. What What is the point of the argument after a certain point? You know, you, you, you got to be able to live and you got to be able to have money to do it. If y'all both can contribute that, there's no need for the argument. But now I do I do say for for me, you know, uh, and this is my part of thing. Um, you know, yeah, when I when I'm able to, you know, be able to have the money to be able, to, you know, take care of everything. Sure, I, I I'd be glad to take uh, take care of that, you know. And the thing yeah. is, um, you know, my wife still have like you know whether you know money we can be able to help you know make the house better or have it in savings, put in investments, whatever, just to be able to get us make it where we have more money have better investments more money it's just it it, it it needs to build after a certain point but staying stagnant where you're just arguing over it it's just it just makes no sense to me i agree getting money shouldn't be a gender role man you know what i'm saying like women can get money like for real like that's bro so that's women out here getting to it women can invest women can handle finances women can you know do bookkeeping and management especially say I think, bro, just for me, bro, with the industry that I'm in and the knowledge that I get, like I understand all these different things about investments and about, you know, retirement accounts and tax savings and stuff like that. So when I just think about a power couple, you know what I'm saying? I don't just think about a woman that stays home and doesn't earn, you know what I'm saying? Like you can stay home, you can stay home and not earn. Don't get me wrong. You know what I'm saying? If you only stay home and you know what I'm saying? Uh, homeschool your kids. Like, that's powerful. Like, you can't mm-hmm. put a house Yeah. And if your woman does stay home and take care of the household, you can't put a price on that. But men take care of the household, too. You got to repair some shit. When some shit go wrong, you got to mow the grass. You got to maintain the household. So, you know what I'm saying? It's both 
you got duties that are to the marriage and to the home. But I think that you should just put this stereotype that a woman can't be at home and make money. You know what I'm saying? Or she can't go out and have a career and, you know, be powerful at like that. Because, like, bro, say y'all got y'all both got a business, right? Mm-hmm. And y'all got um, get your LLC and you start a business and y'all don't have any employees. And there's just two women at women in, or, you know, just spouse and spouse. If y'all start something called a solo 401k, you could save like 50000 each, you know what I'm saying, between the both of y'all. Mm-hmm. But if only one of y'all is working, you know what I'm saying, then it's not as much that you could save. And so, like, it's just powerful stuff like that to where maybe the decision for a man to say, hey, you know, my wife don't necessarily got to – it's not it's not competing, bro. It's like, you know what I'm saying, the way I grew up, bro, my parents is like – our money is, is each other's and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? But it's not necessarily about competing. It's just about contributing and being able to get those types of benefits to where you can double your savings in a solo 401k or another one. If you uh, sell a house and you can get $250,000 in capital gains on your house tax free, but you can get 500,000 if you're married. So like, I think marriage got a lot of financial benefits and I don't think that, it's all for the husband to be like, oh, that's all on me. Like, you don't got to take on that burden by yourself. It, like you said, bro, it costs a lot. It costs a lot in today's society to, you know, be able to do that by yourself. I think 200000 upwards. You know what I'm saying? You could do it on less, but you talked about surviving, Jack. You know what I'm saying? Do you want to survive or do you want to thrive? You know what I'm saying? Are you building a legacy or are you just trying to maintain? Either or. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's goals is different, bro. But for me, bro. I wouldn't just put it on myself to say, hey, no matter what, I'm going to be the only motherfucker in this house. <laughs> My bad. I, ain't I don't know if y'all <laughs> got it here, bro, but I ain't I, trying to. You're only person. Sorry, boss, man. You good. you good. I'm glad about this episode, too, because just disclaimer for everybody that know Matthias, he is very, very intelligent and very smart, despite the stuff that y'all may see on social media. So I'm glad we <laughs> I'm glad we got the chance for you to display your knowledge and the stuff that you talk about. You're talking about like investments and things of that nature and creating like generational wealth. So yeah. thank you. Yeah. Big, bro. I'm glad you're able to showcase that Lincoln College prep education. Yeah, yes, education, sir. boy. Y'all know how we come from the prep, man. It's different. Hello. Hello. I love seeing everybody from Lincoln, bro, just you know what I'm saying, thriving, bro. Like I heard doing what y'all want to do and doing different stuff, bro. Most people, bros out here just living. I love that, bro. That's facts. That's real. Yeah. Can I yeah. can I say something on this topic though? Yeah, please. Cause like I feel like I feel like at a certain point, like I agree with everything that y'all been saying. I feel mm-hmm. like there's another element here, like social media, like influencer environment has created this image of just like how relationships are supposed to operate and. Yeah. I'm not a slave, bro, and I'm I'm not gonna be a grown woman's parent like that. Really? And it shouldn't be the it shouldn't be the other way around either. Like, yeah, you know, like my wife shouldn't be my parent, my my benefit. Like, Thanks. there's no benefactors in a relationship, bro. Like, yeah. you like if you up, then you do what you need to do, obviously. But also, like, there's a such thing as sweat equity to me in any relationship. Like, both parties got to put in work to some degree and like what that work looks like between the between the parent like y'all can mediate that but i feel like social media has just created this image of just like the the man is like the provider on like every single level and you got dudes who are really ass out like you know working working in some ways like dead-end jobs just not making a whole lot of money for them and they got these expectations of like they're supposed to you know pay this and pay that and take care of this take care of that and then you got somebody else in a relationship just like stacking a bread and you know who's like a RN making <laughs> six figures. You no, know, it's splurging on itself. And it's just yeah. like that's that's not a that's not a union at that point. Yeah. It's not a marriage. It's not a sure. it's not a relationship. Like I'm taking care of you in that reality. And so it's just like on on like on a on like an emotional sweat equity level. Like are you putting in are, are both parties putting in work to like maintain the integrity of the relationship because if i feel like my whole existence and value is just work 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 you know to 
to stabilize this union and you could also be doing that and kind of have to in like this society is the way with inflation is going and just like wages, but you're not. And it's just like, yeah, I see you breaking your back and you know, fucking killing yourself and depressed when you come home and shit. But uh I'ma chill, go make this money. Like, what the fuck? Like that kind of it's not early, like, bro. Right. Like my fucking my fucking had hypertension. He's dying from heart attacks, like getting disabled at a young age, just like dying from stress, suicide, all kinds of shit. And I think that's the and that's facts. And a lot of that attests to I feel like, you know, our ancestors, you know, our grandfathers would be like working like in the industrial age, coming back from working the railroads, coming back from working the factories. 80 hour a week. He just was, took it down. Yeah. Just, you know, as long as you're bringing in money, man. But even on that end, like that was that was during a time when like women legally could not work like in those spaces. You know, and so it's like to me, it's like, does Jay-Z and Beyonce had this conversation? Is Beyonce ever looking at Jay-Z and being like, You paying for everything, I'm stacking my shit? You know, <laughs> no, nigga, she buying islands too. Like, what are we what are we talking about? And that's can you imagine like with their book. Like what them conversations are like for real, for real. And then, and then, and then, and then just, to, and then just to regard the whole race thing is Travis Kelsey begging Taylor Swift for anything. Are they having no conversations? No, <laughs> hey, he probably flew it out himself for real, for real. Exactly. So she's like, the well, last thing. I, the last thing I'm gonna say. I'm gonna invest into something that Taylor got going on. He recognized that Taylor got. More emotion than him, and that's cool. You know what I'm saying? That don't mean that he don't got no emotion or that he's not a man. Like I think you respect a man that is more intelligent in his decisions than more emotional. And I think that pride is one of the emotions that men got the worst, bro. Like it's a double edged sword for us, bro. You know what I'm saying? You could walk in your pride and be proud and, and do things and conquer things, or you can be too proudful and you know what I'm saying, be conceited. And then your ego is overinflated and you start doing shit that's out of character or stupid shit or shit that's not thought through. And for you to tell for you to tell Tay Tay, take a back seat, I got this, I'm gonna get this money for us. That's down shit. <laughs> like, you know that's what I'm crazy. saying? He got motion, bro. I am uh, over that. What you need, what do we gotta do to, you know what I'm saying? Who do we need to hire? I might not even know everything, but I bet you I'm gonna be in charge of all ancillary services. Like anything that's supporting Tay Tay's career, bro. I'm handling that, you know what I'm saying? So, damn, my nigga said ancillary services. Right, like, he talking about that, that day, bro. <laughs> about that dental and vision. I'm just you saying, saying life. Life. you gotta be on that, bro. Like, and I think a wife should be the same thing. So, my wife not my, might not necessarily go and get money, you know what I'm saying? But she collecting just like I'm collecting, like you know what I'm saying? Because I want to have that relationship to where was mine is yours and you know what I'm saying whatever vice versa and shit but it gotta be gotta be somewhat symbiotic like bro like we both gotta be benefiting not just each other but the marriage you know what I'm saying the union you know what I'm saying what are we building like a legacy you know what I'm saying and so I just think that bro I think people like you said bro Corey brainwash bro brainwash <laughs> you know what I'm saying yeah. By this internet, bro. Yeah. They see a lifestyle and they like, ooh. But like that lifestyle don't fit your situation. Man. <laughs> it's and, it's also, it real. Real. and it's not realistic. I just you can be realistic to your situation at hand. Because you could be down one moment and then up the other or reverse. You know what I'm saying? So like as long as you're realistic and like logical to like your situation, make it make sense. Yeah, I want I want to say one last thing. Oh, go I want to say one last thing, and then, and then I want I want to hear what Steph got to say. Yeah, but uh, yeah, the last thing I was I was gonna say is just like I feel like the people who espouse like this this whole and it's like men and women. It's not just women saying this, but like the people who are like gung ho on yeah. like the man is the the provider in like every single financial sense. It don't matter like your level. It don't matter who making the most bread in the relationship. It don't matter the responsibilities. Nothing. It's just like the man does everything and a woman, you know, just like exists or whatever. I feel like the people that have that understanding of a relationship are either perpetually single, they perpetually divorce, 
or they they in a relationship where they can talk a lot of like you know big shit online but they really they really depressed and like yearning for for a lot more like interpersonally with their own partner so that's kind of how i feel about it it's just like be careful who you take advice from because a lot of these people that are talking about relationships not really in relationships to even have that kind of perspective so true enough you need purpose in everything bro Steph, what's your opinion, man? You've been quiet down there. I'm not plugged into the conversation that has been going on in social media, what y'all been talking about. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be honest, bro. Who is going to be comfortable with a 90-10, 80-20 situation? I mean, it's only going to take some me. Some dudes that are, though. It's some dudes out there that, that are like, let's, let's go. I've been waiting yeah. my whole life. But hey, Y'all need to wake up, man. If y'all in an 80-20 situation, get it out, bro. When y'all grew up and y'all went on your first date, you felt you had to pay, right? Yeah, like, for sure. like you know yeah. what I'm saying? When you was growing up for prom, like, oh, I gotta front the tickets, bro. Like all through when I was young, bro, I had that mindset, like, all right, yeah. Yeah, bro. I don't know. Bro. I, don't I work for them bugs, bro. <laughs> hey, bro. World's a fun bro. where I got the tickets for free. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But when you're young, you got that mindset though. Like, you know what I'm saying? You think that's what is manhood, you know what I'm saying? Is is I got everything, like, because you it's it's a protective mindset. But once you grow up and you get outside your ego, like I said, bro, you start to say, like, bro, my wife could be an asset, bro, in her own right, you know what I'm saying, to this family, to this. This this business, bro. Like, bro, everything is about families out here, bro. And like, I think family is so important that you really gotta like be careful what you base your shit on. Like, all right, either you know, football players, for example. You know, what I'm saying yeah. thing. Uh, what is it, basketball or football wise or whatever and shit like that. Like, that's cool and all, but like, she could be an author in her own right. You know, what I'm saying she could be Kyle Kyle Juice Check. You know, what I'm saying his. She could be a. a what is that? Uh, a fashion designer. You know what I'm saying, bro. She could be. A, she could be an astronaut, bro. She could be a doctor, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying. Like, Simone, Biles. Simone Biles, bro. Motion, bro. <laughs> like people. Simone Biles' husbands, but they were saying like, bro. <laughs> and so, like, it's it's crazy for somebody to come in and be like, oh yeah, you got all this going on, but you know what I'm saying. Settle down. I'm the husband in this relationship, so. I got all the I gotta get all the money. You know what I'm saying? So, I'd be like, go ahead, baby, make that money. Hey. That's more bro, trips bro. we can go on. You said what? what? We put that money together. I'm just saying that's more trips we can go on. Like those are the conversations I have with, with right? Like, what where we wanna go, what we wanna do this year, and like we we talking about it like our money, like our pool. It's not like Oh, we want to go here. All right, Corey, you got to start getting the money together. Like, come on. But <laughs> <laughs> well, look, though, bro, and then, like, it's like, come up- why don't you want your spouse to learn from you, bro? Like, why don't y'all want to learn from each other? So if my wife is doing this and I don't know nothing about it, I'm trying to get put on. The same, same should be vice versa. You know what I'm saying? If I'm, especially if it's, like, bro, if it's a business, bro, like, especially, like, why wouldn't you want to learn your family business so that if something does happen, which we just talked about it, bro, shit happens, bro. Like people die early. Why would you want to just be left alone to not know how to maintain none of it? Because you got to maintain, bro, especially with lifestyles, bro, that, that people are expecting nowadays, bro. You got to be able to maintain and, and have income. And if you don't know how to run that business, you know what I'm saying? You act out. So it's just like. Yes, man. All right, y'all. Well, hey, I'm gonna I'm I'm cut us off on, on this one. We're gonna move on to the next topic. Monday. So, eating ass or groceries, whichever. <laughs> is it too freaky for the young guys or is it just a grown man thing? But, <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and let you start with that one, too, man. Yeah, I can't call it, I can't call it no grown man thing, but hey, niggas, dogs, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. Eating ass work bro like it's simply crazy you can just i just think that <laughs> yeah we funny as fuck bro 
I just think it's crazy work though, bro. Like, where's some hey, bro? You don't eat where you sit at, bro. Like, I thought that was just <laughs> simple shit that we grew up growing to. You know what I'm saying? I think that as kids, bro, kids know not to eat ass. They look at you like what? Like ass? <laughs> like crazy shit? I'll be like, oh, it's grown man. See, grown man look at it different. I think that grown man is stupider because like that kid, no, that's what you see. <laughs> Hey, bro. So, like, keep it, keep it a G, bro. You down there, you driving downtown, you know what I'm saying? You didn't, you didn't kind of swerve just a tad bit. I was gonna ask that too. You didn't just swerve a tad bit, like, you didn't know you were swerving, but you was, you was down in that area, you know what I'm saying? Attraction control, I think you know what you're doing. (laughs) <laughs> you swerving, bro. You swerving on purpose, bro. So, <laughs> oh, bro. It'd be like, on, man. Bro. Hold on, slippery road. Hey, everything can drive the different, bro. Don't work, my boy. <laughs> man, this is all wheel drives, good tires, man. No. <laughs> bro. Hey, bro. I, I don't know if you, know, you know, drove in that in that Kansas City snow, but sometimes that all wheel drive don't protect you, man. You still you still swerve out. This is I'm crazy. crashing there, man. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I, I, I'm even gonna say this: if a nigga didn't be, you know, what I'm saying drunk, or I, I know niggas be on all type of shits when they, you know, what I'm saying they get into it. So, you know, what I'm saying if you just swerved off road, but you got back on straight, you good. You know what I'm saying? But niggas that swerve intentionally, y'all drunk, bro. Like I know that, bro. <laughs> <laughs> hey. <laughs> Damn, bro. <laughs> I think that fellatio is enough. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you ain't if you ain't got your fellatio down packed, then yeah, you gotta swerve off into the grocery section, and you know what I'm saying. But I ain't got the problem, bro. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm a I'm gonna pose this question to the married man. Like, y'all can be as candid as you want or not. Is that in y'all repertoire? Hey, hey be like, careful, be no careful, Jack. No fucking dingleberries. No, they gonna hang. Say in y'all repertoire, and like, what oh, are the results? No. And, and the thing is, I'm gonna say this for the record. I, I'm an ass man. I, I man, I love, I love, I love, I love, I love booze. But the thing is, no, I'm not eating that shit. Literally, <laughs> I that on my mind to go that route. No. There's nothing that's advertising about those like, oh yeah. I'm like, boy, y'all might as well just eat some chitlins then, man. What the hell? <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah. Chitlins, bro. I'm just looking for myself. I don't <laughs> chitlins, bro. I swear, bro. So yeah. I just realized, bro, people are here different, bro. And that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> hey, people are different, bro. I just think that people shit out their ass. Do, do people not care? <laughs> hey, I don't get it, bro. I ain't I ain't never in my life thought you can clean an ass that much from leaving my tongue. You still be people out here. Bro, that look, bro, if you had a look, bro, I think people should just ask themselves this question. If you had two buckets <laughs> and you cook in one bucket and you shit in the other, would you feel that you can clean the shit bucket enough for you to cook out of the shit bucket? And yeah. if you say that, and that's cool. Hey, I'm um, power to you, bro. I got one bucket for cooking, and I got one bucket for sitting, bro. And I can't ever clean or mix, match them buckets up or nothing. <laughs> I'm, I'm dead. Corey, man. That's the way I'm seeing, man. You know, it, in, all, in, in all realness, I don't partake. But just to be devil's advocate, I'm going to pose this, you know. I've heard that there there are ways to to clean, to refresh, to douche, et cetera, et cetera. And the argument that I've always heard in response to like the naysayers of, of eating groceries, yeah, that the you know that you know performing fellatio on a man, you know, urine, you know, kind of the same situation, the the vaginal canal close to the anus. You know, just a couple degrees of separation. So I put it, I put it like this, man. Like in the context of like driving off road versus swerving. Yeah, have I swerved before? 
Sure. Even the greatest drivers have swerved before. Fucking uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. has swerved before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, boy, swerving. And I, left no, I ain't gonna lie and say I, I ain't swerved before. But in terms of driving the course off road, you know, I'm I'm a street driver. I don't I don't like going off road that much. You know, it's a little, it's a little it don't fit, it don't fit my style. I like a smooth ride. But I'm gonna just put that out there to y'all. Like, is it is it the the cleanliness factor, or is it just like the perception that people shit out? Yeah, I've been told that. that. <laughs> that ain't a perception, bro. That's a reality. People shit out their asses. I'm sorry. I'm just saying, bro. People shit out their ass is a reality, bro. <laughs> I think it's not fun. the same reality and shit. I realized that, like I said, bro, it's different out here, bro. You know what I'm saying? Matrix, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> <laughs> Different, different, uh, what's the uh, shit going on? Multiverse, you know what I'm saying? So maybe in the multiverse, they they eat ass, and they, you know what I'm saying? They don't perform no more fellatio, but yeah, I, that mean, I mean, in the multiverse, it's a version of you that eat ass, bro, right? Probably is. I don't even fuck a dude like that, though. <laughs> for real with you, bro. <laughs> to be for real with you, bro, he probably a different type of dude. You know what I'm saying, but <laughs> <laughs> I pose this, and I, and I know what you said, like uh, that. Yeah, you know, saying people say you urinate out of your, you know, your penis or your vagina. I'm choosing that over shit, <laughs> blood over shit. Hey, hey. <laughs> up another question to be for real, for real. I was, uh, I was talking to this uh, young lady recently, and she was telling me like, when a woman like. What? How do I want to put it? When a woman is like on sprinkler, that's urine. That's not. Oh yeah. That's urine, and so it kind of concerned me because I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't ran in the sprinkler a few times. You know what I'm saying? I'm just like, bro, is no, this I- I'm experiencing or like what? And like, it just bothered me because like I'm not, I'm not like an R. Kelly kind of nigga. Like I'm, I'm, not, I'm not with the piss, bro. No, so, hey. wait, is that what that means? The sprinkler. Nah, man. They squirt, He's man. Talking about, yeah, squirt. Oh, okay. okay. I was yeah, squirt. Sorry, when you went there, bro, I was thinking like, wait, what? I was like, that's cool. be peeing there, though, bro. It no, definitely no, be no, peeing. Yeah, no, 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 uh, that, For real, for real, Matthias? Yeah, it be peeing there, bro. <laughs> All right, well. Oh, man. Hey, be like that, bro. Be like that. That's crazy. Steph said he with the bench. Nah, 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 nah. I'm not. <laughs> That's just um. Nah, I'm a, I'm a I'm a I'm a tap out of this. Who would I deal with this conversation, bro? Who would I deal with this topic? Bro? <laughs> hey, it was just on the it was on um, on the marquee, man. What, what, what do you what do you think about it? Do you think it's too freaky for the young guys or is it a girl bad thing? What do you think about it? More power to the people who do it, bro. That's all I'm gonna say. Hey, Steph, let me ask you this, bro. Let me ask you this question, Steph. If you're married and your wife was like, "Hey, let's try this." Oh my god! Pound <laughs> Would you would you be would you be up for it or like you just like nah? How long have I been dating this woman for this to come out of your married. wife? He said he says you married. It's a marriage gift. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro. I, I don't think I don't think I could do I it. I couldn't do it. Okay. So commitment. I'm gonna say this though. I feel like it's a lot of dudes. That say they don't eat ass, they lying. Them niggas be, they just shame, bro. They just don't want to admit it. It'd be like that. It was like that when you was young and, you know what I'm saying, you start eating, you know what I'm saying, the cat. Like, everybody was scared to say they did it. But, see, I was young and I was already was into that. So, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm super freaky. And I start finding out people eating ass. I was like, I can't compete, bro. <laughs> just, I, what was that moment that you just like, so appalled when you heard like 
dudes was out here eating ass like that. I thought it was a joke. I was thinking, like, I was like this can't be real, man. <laughs> when it came all the way wearing the I love boobies, He's crazy. crazy. You know what I'm saying? Crazy. Yeah, but I saw Kevin Gates. <laughs> when I saw Kevin Gates say what he said, I was like, this is really out here eating ass. What? Kevin Gates is a freaky dude. He different, bro. <laughs> He's up. <laughs> Gates is different. He on that. He on that Diddy <laughs> shit, bro. He different. <laughs> Dude's out here kicking it too hard. Ain't he sleep with his cousin though? That's, That's what foul. I think he did. That's foul, bro. And I think he went back after he found out that was his cousin. <laughs> like I said, man, Diddler on the roof. It's crazy right now. Hey. Wow. What the hell you need oh, this, man? Oh, that dope. <laughs> it's not I think we definitely wear out this time. Anybody else got any more, any, any more sit on this? Literally. <laughs> got it, bro. We can go. <laughs> We're going to move on to this next topic, man. Uh, so hold on. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, Jack. I, I do got one more thing to say. One more thing? Okay. Go ahead, man. I just want to, and this is just like speculative on my part, but I just want to know, like, do it actually feel good for a woman or whoever? And, like, does the dude actually enjoy it? Because I don't know. Like, like, you know when, you, when you're on a toilet and, like, you flush, sometimes that little splash hits you. That shit's uncomfortable, bro. Like, that don't feel good to me. Like, <laughs> I jump off the toilet, bro. I don't want to stay for that. So I, I just trying it's, to figure out the mentality. It's so nasty for them. Yeah. I think it feel good for them. Look, bro. Yo, yo, anus do got, like, you know what I'm saying, hella uh, nerves. So, like, you think about it, like, when you sit, it's kind of relieving. You know what I'm saying? So, like, <laughs> the girls is out here, they probably do, like, getting their ass ate, and that's cool and all, but. Hey, my wife asked, asked to get her ass ate. Hey, we could fall out, bro. We <laughs> come to that, bro. We could fall out, bro. To be for real. <laughs> I ain't got it. I ain't, I ain't got it in me, bro. So what I'm hearing is hallways on BS do not co-sign eating the groceries. Y'all are hilarious, man. All right, eat, not, nah, you, you know, you always hear this question would y'all eat Beyonce? No. Her booty? No. For a chance to hit, who the fuck it is. For, chance, for a chance to hit, is there somebody who you would do it to? No. I made mean, it, bro. Beyonce, I would give a thought to a real ass eater versus a fake one. You know what I'm saying? If you want to know the undercovers, oh, I'll like, do it for Beyonce. <laughs> oh, so. <laughs> That's how you find out the fake niggas. They be like, "Yeah, I'll do it for Beyonce. I'll do it Rihanna. That's just that's just Rihanna, though." I, I'll put this all them niggas shit out the same and the same type of asshole. No, <laughs> the answer is no. I don't care if it's Amy. I don't care if it's Beyonce, Rihanna. No, they said <laughs> just like Rihanna. They probably got enough money to make her stuff smell like cinnamon toast crunch, bro. <laughs> all right. I hate to be an asshole, but let's move on to the next topic. <laughs> Please. Because hey. I'm going to find more about myself, man. That's crazy. Uh, this episode is blowing my mind, bro. Hold on, bro. You can't talk with that, uh, that hentai shit you said. <laughs> <laughs> he did say it. My mind is blown. <laughs> I'm just my mind. So <laughs> it gets smudged. It gets smudged. <laughs> That did happen. That did happen. I mean. <laughs> we come on to the next topic, man. So this next topic this uh, parlays with this class of WNBA drafts. How do you think this will impact the league? So more so WNBA league. So uh Soprano, I'll start with you, man. How do you think this will impact uh WNBA with this uh, WNBA draft class? I mean, this new draft class, they got they got the shine, bro. Like people people really been really been. What the fuck is this? Echo? Yeah, I Bro, was, I'm, yeah, I heard about it. Yeah, I think Zencaster tweaking today. Is it really Zencaster? Is it somebody's computer? But Echo, 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, bro, let me see. This morning. Oh, Guys and Juice sound good. Uh, yeah. Uh, spread. I think. I think yours is. It, it echoes a little bit in this step, maybe just a little bit, but it's not as much though. You still hear it? Okay, there you go. I just heard it on you though. Yeah, on yours, yep. Here you guys, on mine. I think we good. Uh, yeah. It ain't as bad as it was before. Am I good? Yeah. Right. Okay, bro. Damn, bro, you fucked this up. Yeah, Soprano, uh, uh, it's all you, man. Yeah, I was just gonna say real quick, like, I think I think it's gonna be good for the WNBA. There's a lot of cash flow already coming in, like Kaylin Clark's jersey for the Indiana Fever sold out within like minutes of her getting drafted. I think they said like season season ticket holder like tickets. You know, for those seats sold out within like a couple of hours. So I feel like it, it's really in it. You got, you know, what Julius was saying before we even started about the Chicago Sky, like Camilla Cardona yeah. and uh, Reese. Reese, you know, them getting drafted to Chicago and the tickets already, you know, skyrocketing in price. So they all sold out and it's all resale tickets, man. I tried to book them tickets for like the Indiana Fever versus the Chicago Sky, bro. Like nosebleed seats are like three ninety four right now, and like course our seats are like just gracing under a thousand, bro. It's ridiculous. Yeah, so I mean that that's way up because I remember I was looking at tickets. I think like a couple years ago uh, to to see the Chicago Sky, you know, they playoffs and course side bro, tickets was like a couple hundred dollars. So. You, know, you already see in the inflation, so I feel like it, like it's always like whatever is getting media attention, like gambling circuits, you know, news outlets. They're gonna follow what has what what's what's the wave at the time. So you know, it's a lot of money to be made on on women's basketball in particular because a lot of places are starting to pay attention to it. I feel like it's only going to increase. Yeah. I think I think parlay just in general, man, like toxic. <laughs> to, to keep it a butt, because like you can sports better up here in Chicago, so like I might do one every now and again. I should have really did one on this um this Garcia fight last night. Oh but, my God, um, bro. It's always like <laughs> that was crazy. Three bands off of that knockout, bro. I mean off of that stoppage. I mean not stop, but you know what I'm saying, decision like Vision, bro, yeah. at a point in time, I think like eight, nine round, it was plus 100, mm-hmm. bro. You bet 2,200 on that, you win six, almost six bands, bro. Like, up, bro? That's wicked. That's wicked, yeah. But I think it, it, it's a, it'll be an interesting aspect, an like interesting, like, you know, session to be able to put into, like, the parlays, if not already, you know, just to kind of see, you know, where the stats at are for, the women's like, you know, who's going to hit this amount of rebounds? Who's going to get this uh, points per game? Things of that nature. So I think it'll, it'll add an interesting aspect to it. But <clears throat> in my defense, it's always one person on a parlay who messes it up for the whole thing, bro. And Matthias, you could probably attest to it, bro. Like, yo, your parlay will be smooth for a six leg. And then that, that six game, that six person, it's a wrap. The most simple shit, too, bro. Like, niggas, <laughs> bro. It's insane. Bro, <laughs> it'll be stupid stat like like thirteen rebounds, like and they get like twelve and a half or something. Man, <laughs> but that's but look though. That's why the that's why the that's why the line is twelve and a half because they got actuaries, bro. Like they really hire actuaries to come to the school to make sure they don't lose money. So when over under be for the total of the game be two twenty five and they end at two twenty four, and a coincidence, bro. Like they calculated, bro. Like. That's why. So yeah. that shit is insane, bro. Don't get me started, bro. <laughs> <laughs> nah, come on, bro. Come with it, no, bro. But I think I think WNBA is definitely about to go crazy. You know what I'm saying? Just me as a better, I, I definitely go bet on Caitlin Clark. I bet it on the you know uh, the women's Final Four and stuff like that. So like, you know, I think sports betting definitely can benefit sports, but. You know, we just got to keep it at a certain level. Like, you know what I'm saying? There's people getting suspended for uh, – or, no, we got Ben, John Tate Porter, Michael Porter, brother. 
He got banned from the NBA. <laughs> oh, oh, bro, like, banned man, for life. Yo, sales, crazy. Bro. Yo, under like, bro, you 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 scheduled to make millions of dollars over an NBA career, bro, and you gonna ruin it sports betting, like, and then it, it, it's all because now we think, well, who else is doing it? You know what I'm saying? Niggas is probably it. Games like, bro. Anthony Davis got to be a part of that or something. The way that boy be getting there, <laughs> he got he, he got to be in on or something because that dude be getting way too hurt for my liking, bro. It'd be like, hey, you, you got a headache, bro? bro for real, for real. That nigga pissed me off with that shit, man. I'm like, dog, I done played basketball with a fucking hangover before, dog. You sit down for a headache? I was like, come on, man. This insane. He don't get in the box and being seven feet, man. That's crazy. He 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 be out with the stupidest stuff, man. Just like ah, my ankle sore. Ah, I can't. My, my back, my back hurt, bro. Just make the layup, dog. That's all we need to do. Nah, I'm like, dog, come on, man. In my boy AD defense, man, he played like 76 games this year, so you know what I'm saying. We are gonna see what the Lakers. No, that's the fucking yeah. job, man. <laughs> Yeah, bro. Oh, I ain't going to do that. Like, oh, man, you don't work a good amount of time this year. Like, yeah, boy, you expect me to be here. <laughs> no, bro. Look at that, bro. Look at that. 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 That's like a nigga that show up 30 minutes late for work every single day out of the year. And then for a month, he five minutes he five minutes early. And they want to talk crazy to everybody. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> nah, bro. Nah. That don't work like that. We see what you're capable of. Why out today? Like, that's insane, bro. Like, bro, it's game one, bro. Kawhi, that's that's uncommon for Kawhi. Hey, Kawhi wasn't needed, man. Shoot, they, boy, they built the bass ass. <laughs> it's hey, man. Kawhi. He just sitting there drinking his, his little no. whatever. Dude was chilling. Kawhi, like, bro. he like Aang, bro. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> He might be gone for a minute, but that nigga show up when you really need him at the right time, bro. Hell no, man. Y'all crazy. He's going to come back. Yeah, he'll win you a game, too. He robotic. He like Android 16, bro. That nigga, like, he he's, like, season. he's programmed. It's so crazy, bro, because he really, like, be killing when he on the court, bro. But, like, you just – like, Anthony Davis, bro, he really be the best players, though, that – can't stay on the court. Like, it's insane, bro. Like, sometimes I'll be like, bro, why is scrub ain't get hurt? No, no disrespect. <laughs> Nobody hey. get hurt, but damn, like, bro, you got to take the best player, bro. Like, it'd be a game. I feel like it's like my home and shit. Just... Like, take the back up or something, bro. Man, hey, Patrick Mahomes played on a bum ankle uh, in the Super Bowl, and he still won. So, I don't I don't really know about excuses. Players but... is different, you know what I'm saying? You know the Probably started yeah. playing on Achilles, and people be always playing on different instruments. I think everybody's different, bro. AD is a little special, but um, he's, he's nah, bro. That nigga, that nigga said he was he was suffering from nausea, <laughs> so he stopped playing. Come on, Paul Pierce, <laughs> nausea. Hey, Jordan played through nausea too, and we called it the flu game. Come on, man. You better take some take some Pepto Bismol and get your ass back out there, man. Hey, my boy, Jordan had to be carried off by uh Pippen, man. He's not playing, bro. I think these niggas just don't be wanting to play, bro. They'd be like, "I want to take a day off. I'm sick. I'm sorry." Yeah, Simmons. I mean, they how many games do they play a year? They play <laughs> mad games out of the year, bro. So I really can see scam it. the whole league, bro. Oh, Simmons, Best bro. example: of, I ain't feel like I'm gonna work. <laughs> Hey, that dude is the best robber in history, dog. He he is a he is the best robber in history. No, I gotta give Ben Simmons this man. That dude is committing highway robbery before our eyes, and nobody's paying attention to it, man. Bro, I, I gotta give him credit. Hey, he getting the bag, man, and not doing a thing. A super bag, though, bro. Like he ain't just getting a little rookie bag, bro. Like niggas on a contract. He like some pay. Work this year, not this month, not this week. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this man. No, it, I I heard a thing where um, and I, I I believe this is a real good saying, man. Like where a dude, man, you, you tell a girl I ain't playing no games like Ben Simmons, man. You you you, you gotta you gotta just be honest with it. They got Seriously. that damn thing, man. I agree with that. I agree with that statement right there. Man. Bar. 
That's a bar right there. <laughs> that's a bar for sure. I take no credit. I seen a lot. I was just like, damn, that's clever. <laughs> But to stay, to stay on top of it, just just real quick, um, the WNBA uh, draft. I think though it's going it's gonna really like. I think you guys already kind of hit it on the head where it is gonna make it where um, it's a lot more popular. I think definitely though the Chicago Sky man with with them having both Cardosa and Reese, that, that's a lot of size like down low. So I I really now if I, my whole thing is though with the, you know if they got some shooters around them and stuff because the thing is like think about this. Everybody's gonna be collapsing on them every time they get the ball down low. That mug out, kick it out. Boy, that's a easy but the thing, up. man. Right there, no Cardozo, bro. She blocking out everything. Angel is gonna rebound everything. Yeah. So like, like a perfect situation unless they're playing like the like Las Vegas Aces where they got to go up against uh, Asia Wilson. Mm-hmm. Bro, I, it's gonna be kind of hard to stop them. To be for real, they got some shooters on that squad too. Who did you yeah. get uh, drafted by? Juju's still in the uh, NCAA. Okay. Yeah, we waited. We waited for her. That's a problem. We don't I, man, I was like, shoot, boy, she good too, man. You got. She could have came out. She could have came out this year, but yeah, she she's staying put. And I think Paige Becker's is staying put too. That's fresh How about a flaw? Nah, they, don't, they don't do one and done. I thought I for was three uh, years removed women. from high school. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so they, they gotta stay with their program for a minute. But Flage, they still she uh oh. she's still at LSU, too, so yeah, we waiting on her as well. Okay, because I ain't gonna lie, boy, I, I love her pull up game. Like uh, when I saw her playing uh, uh, uh Final Four, shoot that game. Yeah, was, uh, I got the dog. Man, nah, but she got the dog for sure. No, but it, it's just I, I would definitely say over the next couple of years, uh, and I mean even already as we're seeing with this year, but you know as you see them with more so um. Um, you got more of these players that are bringing that attention into the league. So I would expect the WNBA to really start taking off a little bit more. So I think it's going to, I, I think, I, my bad, I didn't mean to cut you off, bro. No, no, no. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, what do y'all think? Just, just to bounce off what you said, you think it's gonna take off? What do y'all think really is gonna be the catalyst to really push the WNBA to? You know, bro, like they say, Kaylin Cart's contract was like. Four hundred thousand. It wasn't even four hundred thousand, bro, for four years, bro. Like, so like, yeah. at least making like she a year. Making, you know what I'm she make thousand a year. Yeah, bro, she making less than some people, bro. Like, people make more than. I think she didn't like twenty thousand, twenty million deal with Nike, though. No, nah, yeah, yeah, That's for true. sure. Yeah. I think, I think what it is for like contracts for like the league writ large, it's got to be TV deals. Mm-hmm. It's got to yeah. be the TV deals because that's how the NBA made like its money. Like the contracts from the eighties mm-hmm. onwards started ballooning mm-hmm. as the TV deals came in, and you already seeing that. I think the Indiana Fever like negotiate like they play. I think the season for the WNBA is like forty games, something like that. Mm-hmm. And the Indiana Fever already negotiated like thirty six nationally televised oh. games. Mm-hmm. Okay, like, yeah. that's. 36 out of fucking 40 mm. games is going to be on national TV. That's huge. They, they already realizing, like, the paper is coming by getting getting that viewership, mm-hmm. and it mm-hmm. comes from those big networks, and that's how – that's the only way the money is going to go up because, like – Right. Like you right. said, like, Caitlin Clark, she got that big deal with Nike. Like, you know, Paige Becker's got her, her contract with Nike. Angel Reese got her bag with her NIL. So it's like they already getting to the money. Yeah. You know, in terms of, like, the contracts, though – it's the same with the NBA players. Like you got to have those national TV deals, and once you get those, that that collective bargaining agreement, like it's gonna go crazy. It, that money is gonna yeah. be different. Once the viewership increases, like the WNBA, like contracts are gonna be like rewritten like across the board, honestly. Because it's the same thing with the Super Bowl when they had the halftime performance. Um, before they had the halftime, like thirty minutes or whatever, people were going to watch uh, like a like a show and then would come back. So. Mm-hmm. It's all about viewership and how, like, the big corporations can make money off of, like, people viewing in. So once that comes in, they're going to be able to pay these women, like, way more than what they're getting paid yeah. right now. I think mm-hmm. you NIL know, is big, too, because you got the brands that's already pushing the commercials. You know what I'm saying? Like, we talk about TV. TV's paid off of commercials. So the same brands mm-hmm. that's trying to get TV to, you know, throw you a commercial, they are athletes. So I think that, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, Caitlin Clark, as much hate as she get, bro, she transcended the game, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just like Steph did, bro. Like, it might not be the greatest. Right. We don't even got to debate that. But as far as transcending the game, like, just that style of play is entertaining. Mm-hmm. So, you, 
viewership is where it's at, bro. Viewership is money. Viewership means more ad, more companies that want to sponsor you. Sponsorships mean more capital. And you know what I'm saying? What they looking for is views. So, like you said, TV. I think that's happening in streaming, though, bro. Like, streaming is new. And, like, and WNBA is fairly new still. So, why not tap into a new route that the NBA was probably going to late to and try to. It's going to take the NBA, too. You know what I'm saying? They got to. As much as people, some people might feel a different about it, but I think it's dope. You know, they pushing the WNBA because it's just like you're pushing basketball, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's good basketball. Yeah, pushing the sport in total. Yeah. I said one more thing. I think the, or one last thing. I think the other thing that can help drive the growth with the WNBA is like there's, there's a lot of attention on like women's basketball right now. Mm-hmm. The, the price because of the scale and size. Like I know it's, you know, like the prices are starting to go up, but you go to an NBA game. Like I went to a Celtics game and I think I was in like two years ago. I was like, you know, like row seven. So like pretty good seats. That was a couple hundred like to get there. And then last year or no, this year I went to a game and I'm paying a couple hundred to be in, in like the rafters, you know? So, I think like price of tickets, like a lot of people just can't get in the building. And I know the Clippers are, are, are like borrowing from college, trying to have like a like a, you know how they have student sections for like college games where the oh, like, prices yeah, are discounted. Yeah, I mean, Together with the Bulls too. The Clippers are trying to do that with a new stadium. I think the WNBA could really capitalize on just like, you know, it's already people want to get into those stadiums mm-hmm. now, but just like really selling on that demand and taking advantage of just like. The market being smaller compared to the NBA plus the demand, like you could really do some some creative marketing and just like ventures, even in how you do your seating in the stadium to really get people in there. You know, the gear that you give out you know, on giveaway night or whatever, just like a lot of things to create buzz so that even more people want to you know bust down those doors and get in seats that aren't even there. And then you're really talking about expansion because you got to build new stadiums. You got to have larger seating capacity. You got to up your entertainment. So got to push some season tickets, bro. That's where it's at. You know what I'm saying? People don't understand like sp- um, memberships and you know what I'm saying? That's why they always want you to pay up front because they get more of their profit. You know what I'm saying? We get for a hundred dollars for the year, but you know what I'm saying? If you pay monthly, you're paying $24, you know what I'm saying? Or whatever, you know what I'm saying? So it's more. So like they got to push them season tickets. That's why the NFL and NBA already do that because they know that's where the money is too. So just getting people to be loyal, yep. build loyalty programs, like you said, and just them creative ways to, to market it is really going to make it boom. I got, I got faith. Like, you know what I'm saying? I admit I, I never used to watch WNBA and, you know what I'm saying, I started watching college, started watching WNBA, but that's always the best transition. Bro. When you look at some of your favorite players, you look at how they was in college and then they transitioned. NBA or NFL, yep. so that's usually how you get people to, yep. to come on to your sport. You know what I'm saying? That's facts. That's how it facts. Steph, we haven't got we haven't got your opinion yet, man. What, what say you, man? Step out of it, man. Uh, yeah, I'm just chilling this episode, bro. <laughs> yeah, my mind, my mom was blown 15 minutes ago, and I'm just trying to recover from that. <laughs> oh, boy. Hey, yo, that was me. Uh, no, nah, I agree with I agree with everything y'all said, Corey. Jared, Matthias, y'all said some good shit. So let's just go on to the next topic. Hey, Steph, bro, I'm gonna. This is what I'm gonna do, man. I'm gonna give you a. I'm gonna give you a WNBA team, bro. That's your team. You got. You got to follow them. You got to watch, bro. You're not gonna do it, bro. I'll, nah, I'll, I'll do it. I'll you got to do, do it, bro. I'm. I'm gonna take the workout. I'm gonna give you a team, man. Las Vegas Aces. Just watch them, bro. All right, bro. I got you. Just join the bandwagon, bro. They. They. Okay. They're the champions, so. <laughs> It's easy. I'm on it, I'm going to make him a bandwagon. <laughs> <laughs> we we got to get Stefan somehow, some way, because he don't, he don't watch college he sports. Not, yeah, he, he don't, don't not rock with women's sports. With women's sports. Nah, it's just uh, shit. <laughs> what do I say? Is it athletic? No, I just, I just don't watch the WNBA, but I'll start watching for Corey. I'll start watching the shit. Is it, is it hey, athletic man, or, or competitive? I think, I think sometimes, like, People would sleep on women's sports because we used to men being, you know, more testosterone means more, you know, and competitiveness. And we see niggas fucking and open and 
WNBA, I say this about women's basketball is more technical, more yeah. birds basketball. It's winning basketball. Like it, that's why sometimes they really be more skilled than some of the men because men be relying on their athleticism. But I say, like, you really got to be a fan of basketball or just a fan of good basketball, you know what I'm saying, to watch versus NBA. You could just like watching niggas like Ja Duncan, you know what I'm saying, niggas get – Run high and I mean <laughs> run fast and jump high. So you see Jalen Brown do a dunk contest. Yeah. <laughs> Relax, bro. Relax. That was months ago, man. Let that shit go. Hey, yo, <laughs> my boy. Hey, do y'all watch the UFC or like women's combat sports, bro? I'll say like, oh man, like, bro, bro. Some competitive athletic women out there too, bro. Like they just don't got the platform, but like they out there, bro. Like wrestlers. MMA, basketball. That, that one Bella tour, bro. Bro. They get with you, man. Yeah. All right. Every time uh, Valentina Shevchenko got a fight, I'm tuning in, bro. She, <laughs> no cap, bro. She yeah. has to. Yeah. They be banging. You know what I'm saying? That's the case for sure. Yeah. They just need a platform. All right. Take yeah, they, they like take their head off. Else, before I move on to the last topic. <laughs> Yeah, just you you say 50-50 to one of them uh, UFC fighters, and they're going to take your head off, bro. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> they're going to be like, screw up. Roundhouse <laughs> kick your ass. All right, man, we go move on to this last topic. And, uh, so is uh, this or like that, who is winning in the race of the big three? So, man, uh, uh, you know what? Step <laughs> I'm going to let Steph start this time, man, just because he, he, he's he been he's been pulling a bad bird too much, man. What hey, you but, but real quick, though, before Steph talk, this weekend has been a lot, bro. So to, to clarify, <laughs> to clarify, Drake dropped Taylor May freestyle, I think, like on Friday or something, as another diss to Kendrick while using the AI platforms to disguise his voice as Tupac and Snoop, who were like, West Coast Legends to try to like come at Kendrick from a different angle, which is crazy. Then Rick Ross just dropped uh, his this earlier last week to Drake about champagne moments. Champagne moments talking about he had a BBL in a nose job or something, <laughs> which is crazy. But then outside of all that, just weird beef. We got real beef with Quavo and Chris Brown <laughs> right now. And Chris Brown, Chris. <laughs> Chris Brown really came at Quavo in this dish, y'all. I don't know if y'all heard it or not, but he said <laughs> he said some stuff, bro. Like it's Quavo ever got hey, it might get ugly. It might get ugly with that one. I don't know, man. But it's a lot going <laughs> on. Fighting words. <laughs> bro, and then Kanye, matter of fact, Kanye just dropped his like that remix dissing J. Cole who bowed out, which is crazy. And Drake. But, yeah. And Drake. But it's a lot going on, and hip hop is in a weird, a weird state right now, man. I say that, but Steph, Steph, please get your opinion, bro. What you think? Yeah, too much shit. Been, thanks for that, Julius, bro. Cause too much stuff that happened, bro. I haven't yeah. heard Chris Brown shit. I've heard the Kanye shit. Kanye, please go get some help, bro. I mean, nobody want to hear from you right now. You need to be in some sort of mental program. Um, <laughs> but um, J Cole, of course, he's at the bottom. I mean, shit, dude. Come on. You drop a diss and then you take the shit back. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, you disrespected yeah, all the stuff that's going on right now. I mean, you disrespected your fans on that one, dude. I mean, shit, Corey. I'm you a long time fan of J Cole, bro. What did you feel about that? Hey, don't get it twisted. I fuck with J Cole, but it's K Dot, bro. Um, <laughs> I ain't, I ain't, I ain't co-sign that shit he did, bro. <laughs> man, I see Cole, man. Cole ain't want to be in it, bro. He, it is goofy for him to put himself in it and jump into it and then jump, jump out, but. I feel like he just didn't want to be in it. He like fuck it. Like I don't, I don't need that. But I think people is crazy to say that he can't now. He not material to do battle rap when he was just doing that. He be catty, like he was barbecuing and shit. You know what I'm saying? So to say that he not able to is is stupid. To say that maybe he didn't have a stomach to. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm sure he could live with that. I don't think he really cared at this point. But we can say Cole is last, but. Hey, bro, I'm going to say it, bro. Drake is at the top, bro. Drake is, <laughs> Drake is at the top, bro. Drake is at the top. No, now, okay. I, 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 a, better, a better rap. 
I was gonna say that though because <laughs> obviously Kendrick technically is better. I mean, everybody knows Kendrick is a better rapper than Drake. But Drake, he didn't drop two disses, and where's K Dot at? That I'm just looking at it logically right now. Like, okay, if K Dot comes out with something right, and it's just on ether levels, then I'm like, okay, well he won. But until then, Drake is two is two zero or two one. Nobody no so, ether. even K Dot, he ain't dropping no ether. He might come in and do something crazy, but right now he down, bro. Like Drake, I don't care what y'all say. He had to write the AI stuff. You know what I'm saying? And I think it was. I think it was. It was. It was really a, a just a a parody of a song. But he didn't even release it like on platforms. So like it was just a parody because y'all was y'all thought for last for last was AI, but it really wasn't. So now I'm going to use AI, and I'm going to use this nigga's idols? Come on. I say, <laughs> Drake is the one at being petty. petty. I'll, I'll I will. This, man. That nigga took Ghost Rider to a whole new, another level. This nigga brought Tupac, Tupac from the dead, man, to, to come back and rap. I was like, come on, man. But I'll say this. Here's my thing with Drake. I've always been different to him, you know. Yeah, he has some songs, you know, I probably fuck with a little bit, you know, but the whole thing with Drake is, and this is kind of where it, it kind of, this is kind of where it plays into this whole diss thing. The dude has, he, he believes in quantity over quality. Like, yeah, he can just put out all this stuff, you know, and it's just for me, it's just like, okay, I, I, I want some of those stuff. Now, I, I heard of a bits and pieces of, of this recent one. I think it's decent, you know, but... I'm waiting to see what Kendrick says, though. And now, and then also to J. Cole, yeah, he's on the bottom of the three. I'm sorry. If anything, if Drake, if anything, he, yeah, right now, logically speaking, according to Steph, yeah, he, he, he's got the most stuff right now. I do think Rick Ross had a, a little bit of a good diss for him a little bit, but the Metro Boomin future and Kendrick thing, I, I still like the song. I still think it was the best thing, but I think Kendrick do have to do something though, himself, though. Kendrick got a safe song. And but you know what I think is crazy? Every rapper coming out of the woodworks to this J. Cole, I think that's kind of wild to like say that like he's not a good rapper or like trying to make disses towards him. It's like that's who's doing that? Who's yeah. doing that? So I think like Simba or like Mick Jenkins, like other like rappers are just coming out being like F J. Cole essentially, and it's just like, okay, you're gonna talk bad about a man who bowed out of like a battle or whatever. And I, and I get it's, it's controversial on like what he did and everything. Cool. But like, bro said, I'm cool. Like on it. And like, you going to still talk like, why? Like dude, not, I don't know. I feel like that's kind of weak personally. So like, it's just weird. Like even like rappers like this, like false sense of like pride. to like disrespect a top three dude. You know what I mean? It's just weird. Especially if you're talking about sustenance, you know what I'm saying? Some people want to listen to music for sustenance. J. Cole going to give you that. You know what I'm saying? And he could battle rap, but he ain't, he ain't feel like it was his beef. And yeah, so it was goofy for him to, to come out with his diss, but like I say he he is DQ disqualified. Right now it's just between Rick Ross, you know what I'm saying, and Drake and Kendrick. And Kendrick might come out with some heat, but right now, bro, I think Rick Ross is last. Rick Ross, I ain't like his diss, you know what I'm saying? But I guess it is about <laughs> controversy. Well, more, Chris Brown, I guess they on their own lane, but Chris Brown doing. Chris Brown probably got the best diss out of everybody. <laughs> I keep, bro. I'm sorry, where the fuck did he come from with that shit? It came so out of left field, though. It really did, bro. Bro been paranoid like whole time, and just like I gotta get this off right now. I smoke like <laughs> this. Really- People been pulling up clips of Chris Brown saying like Quavo like pull up, bro. <laughs> like at a basketball game, bro. Like come on, bro. You not you not beefing that hard. That's real smoke, bro. And to go on record saying like I like I hit your girl while you was with her. You said, man, what happened to your boy Chris Breeze, man? <laughs> we came a long way from two thousand five, man. <laughs> Dude, he said they took off. They I don't know, Judo, bro. He on a different level. My nigga run it into a whole different level now, man. <laughs> See if you can run it, bro. He said, like, some crazy stuff. He said, like, you should have died instead of take off. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, that blew my That's mind. Insane, bro. Like, bro, he making money off of that song right now. <laughs> he making money off of that song right now saying, like, you should have died. I don't know. If I was Quavo, 
you either got two choices. You got to like, <laughs> I don't condone gun violence, but <laughs> but <laughs> something something has to transpire or just be like, you got it, bro. You won. Cause it, there's no way you talk about you talk you want me to die and you hit my girl out with her, I think I'll probably go to jail, bro. You crash out. I cause bro, like ain't no way. Like you want a reaction, I'm gonna give you the biggest reaction that you wanted, bro. I know can't say anything no office. more, but shit, Quavo gonna have to just nigga get his bars up. He got to get a ghostwriter. Shit, we know we know Quavo can rap Chris Brown, unfortunately, but you know what I'm saying. Got to get a ghostwriter or something, bro. Cause he can't crash out. Why are they beefing? <laughs> Why are they beefing? Karuchi or something like that. Yeah, Karuchi. Chris Brown a bit possessive. I think Quavo was like dating Karuchi for a, a minute while like after they broke up. But Karuchi got a whole restraining order on bro for like like a permanent restraining order because like he was like stalking and like a abusive apparently, which Ooh. is like inexcusable. None of that, none of that's acceptable whatsoever. But just like yeah, so I don't know. Chris Brown kind of tweaking now, bro. He just like I've, I've had it. Like see me, he he he's blooded out, Pyru, whatever, and he just, Man, get the he, fuck up out of here. He's from, he feels great. He's tweaker, bro. And, and he he feels great, and he wants to just get at it. Apparently, so how is he Pyru, and he's from a small town in Virginia? What, what the fuck? Yeah, they got jumped in. I guess he got jumped in when he moved, when he moved out there. Like, um. Uh, this man needs to. He needs some help too, bro. Those I don't know, are the bounty like. I don't know. Bounty hunters just like. Crash out. Like I see if you. Crash out. He might put hands on him, bro. I feel like I don't know, man. Like if you was really on that, you would have did something at like the fashion show. No, nah, he when they were sitting up. to each other. And he said that too, but like, bro, if you really that bothered, you you're rich, bro. Like, what's like. Fifty thousand. I don't know how much you got oh, paid for sitting at the oh, fashion my. show, but like you got you got buku cash, bro. I don't think messing up that bad would have did anything for you. No, nah, of course it. No, nah. oh, you said you saw you saying ain't gonna ain't gonna hit his pockets. I don't know, but yeah. What you what you feel, Corey? How you feel about all this? <laughs> you quiet, my boy. Hey, man. Man. Y'all niggas was really going crazy last episode when I wasn't here. Hey, we did. So we gotta we gotta hear the back end of it, man. Give us your take. I was saying some wild shit. Drake revolutionized disses. No, we didn't say that. Steph said that, bro. <laughs> this nigga revolutionized the diss track, bro. <laughs> Steph said that. I we denied. Hey, okay, okay, no, okay. Hold on, I'm I'm gonna defend myself. Who came? Who was doing back to back disses before Drake? What's For real, Biggie, nigga. Like that was in the nineties. Yeah. Come on, Big Wait, L, did, nigga. Did, Come on. He did back to back disses like he did two disses before the other guy was able to respond. I don't know about that, nigga. I wasn't alive then, but <laughs> in terms of releasing diss track like multiple tracks, like yes, I don't. Yeah. I would probably say like Jay Z, maybe Nas a little bit. They kind of had like multiple disses in a sense. Fifty Cent probably did it against Ja Rule. Yeah, 50 Cent definitely probably. <laughs> I go. All right, I'm, I'm going to sit up because this is how I feel about it. <laughs> Please do, yeah. This is the Drake, J. Cole, Kendrick little triangle that's happening right now. Rick Ross is independent of that. And I guess ASAP Rocky said he got a disc loaded up for Drake too. So I don't know. Everybody, <laughs> everybody can talk about But I feel like. Here's my thing. Drake released two diss tracks. The first one, Push Ups, was kind of cool. It was all right. I give him I give him a B on it. You know, I, I fucked with it. I thought it was better than J. Cole's track. And then yeah. he dropped the AI shit. And on it, he goading Kendrick asking for a response. My thing is, nigga, you waited like two weeks before you responded to the shit. You got you got the fucking Avengers of, of writers. You probably called Yachty and was like, hey, nigga, let's pin some shit real quick. Let's go. And now as soon as you release your shit, it's on. A, it's a timeline. Like, come on, relax, first of all. That's a fact. Second, 
So that's my whole thing is like, let this man cook. Kendrick, you know Kendrick about to come with something. So don't don't try to act like this nigga scared or whatever, because it took you damn near a month to put your shit out. So relax. And his stuff got leaked too. That's the crazy thing about it, man. It still got leaked. Who? Drake shit? That nigga leaked, leaked, leaked himself. Bro. Yeah, he leaked it himself. Yeah. He leaked it himself. Yeah. The second thing I'm gonna say though is the the AI shit. I hope the Tupac estate sue the fuck out that nigga. I hope yeah. I hope they run him for his shit because he he gonna lose money behind that. I hope they do. And if I was Kendrick, I wouldn't say shit. I wouldn't re- I wouldn't release a bar. I would just call the Tupac estate and be like, hey, y'all need to y'all need to do what y'all need to do on over there with OVO because. I don't think y'all get permission for that shit. Shut it down real quick. So Ghost right, um, man. I don't know if you need permission, bro. I don't think he would have did it if he couldn't do it. I don't know. I don't really know know too much about it. Well, no, the, the AI that could be a reason that he leaked it instead of doing it officially on, on his account because the push up track originally it had the um Tupac sample in the back. And he might not have got approved on that. So that might have been the reason it leaked so he don't have to legally defend the shit. It don't matter. Yeah, yeah. He's sharing it. He's oh, sharing it. got leaked. The, the AI one, he shared it on his Instagram. Yeah. yeah. He's sharing it. And well, Taylor May freestyle is probably the one you're referring to. And the whole thing with the AI Drake has that power to get stuff cleared. Apparently. So, like, I was listening to the Joe Budden podcast the other day, and they kind of like broke stuff down a little bit. Drake may be like the owner of the like label that is over Maybach Music Group and, like, Sexy Red, apparently. So, like, that could be a reason why they're beefing, but I think, like, Drake is just trying to become, like, a... He's monopolizing, like, a lot of stuff. So I think that's why a lot of people are, like, trying to come at him so he can say, like, he owns people, essentially. Yeah, that makes sense, because so, I was just wondering, like, damn, boy, everybody got something going on with this dude. I was like... I was like, everybody coming at him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But something that, that ain't nobody mentioned that like don't really sit right with my soul is with the the tupac snoop little ai song that he released like this nigga basically admitted to fucking with underage girls bro like he when he said that like he did he i didn't listen to it it was in the bar where he i think he was playing as like as as Pac, and uh you know Pac was was telling Kendrick like talk about him dating you know little girls or, or underage girls talk about him doing this talk about him like you know trying to goad him and it's like the allegations been there for years like he got the text messages with, with what's her name from Stranger Things Millie Bobby Brown whatever her name is oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He, you know, allegations he brought out a restaurant for an 18 year old and it's like you know if he moved that way he moved that way I can't do shit about it obviously it's yeah. like I don't really like the whole eight mile way of like trying to diffuse a, a beef or like in a beef by just like shitting on yourself. Like that might work for Eminem in a movie, but in real life, bro, like nah, nigga, I'ma still talk about it just cause you said it already don't mean shit. I'm about to <laughs> like, go get fucking uh the predator dude from Dateline and, and line up all these girls and, and yeah. you know have, yeah, them, yeah. have them say was in the background, bro. Like we really coming for you. You just because you said it first don't mean nothing. So I don't know. I just feel like the first track was cool. The second track, I thought it was kind of kind of cheesy for real. For real, we gonna we gonna see what Kendrick do. But Drake with the antics, man. That's that's his whole thing. He not really trying to go bar for bar with people. He just gonna try to out troll somebody. And yes. what I don't think he realizes Kendrick don't give a fuck about the trolling, bro. Like. Mm-hmm. That you seen that nigga hair, you seen how he lived, bro. He don't care about that. <laughs> That's real. And I think also too, Drake knows that his fans are gonna back him up no matter what, you know. And it, it, it's I, I see it a lot where he he kind of has that he kind of has that uh, that uh, that Beyonce style influence. He can put out anything, and his fans will definitely gobble it up. I mean, you can say I guess for any artist to an extent, but for him, I just be like, man, you know. People were like, oh man, this stuff was tight. I was just like, uh, you know, you know, maybe like on the album, like for example, like oh, okay, you know, this this song was probably cool. This one was probably missed. I just, I don't know. For me, with Drake, it, it's always been a thing with him where he's always, as you mentioned, like he's got a troll to get that reaction, like or get yeah. some type of 
of notoriety out it. But like my whole thing is just, hey, I'm looking at the lyricism, the bars, and the uh, the quality of what you have to provide. So that's why I'm hoping, like with Kendrick, like I, I'm I'm just waiting. And hopefully by the time we get to the next episode, we can talk about it. Hopefully, but right. I, I'm just waiting on it because yeah. Yeah, we gonna see. We gonna see, man. But uh, I, I will say, I think uh, anybody else got anything to say on this time before we move on to the PSA? Oh, um, I think K Dot's gonna win in the end, though. I think he's gonna drop some fire. To be honest with you, <laughs> I, I think he's cooking up for real. Not um, drinking, man. I'm excited to hear it. Not what do you say? Not drinking. I'm not. A- I wish we would have like a big topic on this. I've never been like a huge Drake stand. I just acknowledge him for what he's done. Uh, but, but this, you know, but this is the disc master, man. Come on, man. How you gonna, how you gonna say Drake? <laughs> Drake man? Man. No, this is crazy. That was that was light work, bro. He took care of Meek. Anybody could have done that, but I think the way he did it was dope. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy, bro. Because Meek was a battle rapper, bro. That's really crazy. Ah, uh, yeah, Meek yeah. was a battle rapper. That's Meek's one doing Cassidy like that. Cash clear Cash cleared, Cash cleared all that stuff, bro. You know what I'm saying? In terms of just straight up disrespect, bro. Nigga Ether was crazy. Is that a piss off Ice Cube? Yeah. <laughs> ice Cube Ice Cube was tripping on niggas too though. <laughs> I'll tell you what though, I still feel like Push had the greatest the greatest diss of our era. What? The story about it, nah. Yeah, bro. Okay. I, I get your argument, Matthias. I get where you coming from, bro. But one, this nigga Drake ain't responding after that diss. And two, he started taking care of his kid, bro. <laughs> no, but that is true, bro. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> He ain't responding, and, and, and he got his kid a fucking citizenship in Canada, bro. He, he didn't even want that. He didn't even want his son over here, bro. And, and now he got music videos with him. Right. He got a little bit of a point. I feel that. I feel and that. So, you know what the common denominator is? The common denominator and all of that is Kanye. Facts. I was talking to bro. You know that. So, Drake got something for Kanye, too, coming up, I'm pretty sure. It was like a whole campaign to not even buy Yeezys. Like that's crazy. You can't, you can't, you can't get into a, a battle with Kanye, bro. That's just, that's just yeah, a bad I think, look. I know y'all might be biased, but who y'all think bigger right now? Not all time. I know Kanye did a lot of music, but right at this moment, who got more, who got more power? And you know, what I'm saying, just pull Drake or Kanye. As far as pull, just right now, in music, Holy bro. World. Poor Are we talking about musically or like, like as who, far who, as who like interactions? Who more popular? Not not who making the best music. Just as far as popularity, I would have to say Taylor Swift is number one. You know what I'm saying? But in terms, of she's number one. Yeah, I would have to say as pop as far as popularity go, I would have to say Drake. But Kanye's got his stance too, though. But I yeah, and what I'll say is it's it's, it's Drake right now, but. Every every cat falls out the tree at some point, man. Kanye was where Drake was at right now. Like in terms of stranglehold on the industry, yeah. everybody working with him, just going crazy. You know, so Drake gonna fall off soon. It, it's gonna happen. It always do, and it's gonna be somebody else right behind you him. Saying soon, like it's a it's a two year period though. Like Drake had a dynasty, bro. Hey, Kanye had a dynasty of too, course, bro. That's all I'm saying. You know, Kanye is a dynasty yeah. older, Jay Z, but. I'm just saying, like, you're saying, like, Drake is, like, the fall off. Like, everybody got to fall off. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Did you like that dance album that nigga did? I ain't a Drake fan, bro. I just fuck with, you know what I'm saying, certain Drake shit. Like, I recognize, you know what I'm saying, lyricism and, like, I listen to, bro, Mm -hmm. my my top three, bro, is, is like, J. Cole and and, uh, Kendrick. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I fuck with Dot. Like, I know that Dot is, is that. And I know that Drake is not... Same, you know, category of just really having something to talk about. He had, at some point, you know, what I'm saying he was coming with that, but just in terms of like yeah. dissing and stuff like that, and just the the antics, like you saying, like, but that's what it is most of the time. Dissing his antics, like even Ether, as much as you know, what I'm saying Nas can spit, nigga, he was calling him crazy, all type of bitch ass niggas and shit, bro. So, 
If they disrespect, it's the end of the day. But if you, How can you disrespect that nigga? Because that's what y'all seen about yeah. Pusha. Like, Pusha disrespected Drake more. But I just feel like... I mean, Pusha can spit, bro, but I just feel like Drake is, like, doing some different shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, and... Nigga... Oh, you said uh, Pusha got the most... The best diss uh, dis track uh, our, our generation. I'm saying Dolph. Nigga, 100 shots. <laughs> Oh, hundred. Hey, Dolph on a yeah. fucking run. No, dude, I know Dolph ain't spitting like Pusha, but in terms of disrespect and just going on a run, nigga got niggas calling them uh, CMF. Out <laughs> 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 hey, about that, bro. Fair enough. Fair enough. Hey, disrespect. I ain't gonna, gonna debate that. <laughs> Made a whole album about it. I ain't gonna debate well, that. Uh, that's crazy. That's I forgot all about that. That's so, this ain't money for Rest real. You know what I'm saying? Even in Chicago, as crazy it is, niggas made became billionaires off of talking about smoking a dead nigga. Yeah, bro, yeah. people still blast Vine stuff up here all the time. Bro, like I ain't That's even realized crazy. like certain niggas was like when well, Jerbo and them used to be like Pasto, like <laughs> we was <laughs> we was saying that shit, bro. Like that's the Pasto. <laughs> niggas ain't even know, but like they really took that shit to a different level, bro. Like, yeah, it's so common in Chicago too. Like, it's like if they got beef with you, like they'll talk about you, but they'll pull up on you with the yeah. quickness. Like, cats do not play around or play about out here, man. It's crazy. Shit, ugly. Well, hey, we go go ahead and uh, we go go ahead and uh, move on to this PSA. Uh, if- I think we know who uh, who's going to be in detention today based off this PSA. So, uh, Soprano, man, what's on your mind, man? Hey, we'll close out this episode. Yeah, man. The, the, the candidate for detention this episode is our education system. Because all throughout the country, it's failing people, man. Illiteracy is at an all-time high. It, you know, they always said... You know, reading is fundamental. So I wanted to leave people with a definition from from Merriam-Webster dictionary on skill. Because I don't think a lot of people understand what skill means. So Merriam-Webster dictionary says skill is a noun. The ability to use one's knowledge effectively and readily in execution or performance or dexterity or coordination, especially in the execution of learned physical tasks, or a learned power of doing something competently, a developed attitude, aptitude, or ability. You know what skill isn't? What? Your physical fucking capacity. (laughs) If you born as a big ass motherfucker, that's not a skill, bro, that's genetics. If you born seven feet tall, nigga, you just tall. Like that that wasn't a skill. You didn't learn. You didn't physically develop your bones to grow. Nigga, that shit just happened. So that's my challenge to niggas is start reading, bro. Like really, like we had the benefit of going to Lincoln College Prep, you know. And I ain't gonna say it's the best education in the world, but it's better than what a lot of people get. No, that's right, bro. I feel like, you know, the just the things that people people were saying, especially in the context of like, you know, the whole women basketball, men's basketball debate. A lot of people are conflating a very simple concept of, of skill and just like genetic capacity. And it's really not that hard to get. So that's 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 all I wanted to put out there. Just like get your get your reading up, bro. Like read some books, man. Get your get your literacy game tight. You know, look through a thesaurus, look through a dictionary every now and then. Shit, they got they got something called called Word Genius. I subscribe to it. You get a, a fresh word every single day. You learn something. Like That's a- try to try to expand your neural pathways because a lot of y'all niggas are just stupid, bro, and it's kind of annoying. That's a- and I'll add on to that that our show is rated E, which means that. If you want to come for somebody that we're close to, we'll come at you. Like the comments are for everyone. 
not just not just anyone in particular, for everyone. And we will so, throw your ass too. From all different directions. Yeah, bro. Like we really we really smart over here. Like we got we got Matthias and again, shout out to you being on the show, man. We we appreciate yeah, Thank you for being on the show once again, man. But like but like Matthias, like he he people with like investments and shit. You got Steph on his engineering tip. Jack is is a fucking scientist, and then you got Drew on his salesman tip. So it's like it's it's really a, a lot of knowledge in this this little bubble we got going on, mm-hmm. and just fucking smooth brain ass niggas trying to come into the comments and act like they they flexing some knowledge. Like, come on, bro, you you probably struggle with Dr. Seuss, nigga. Don't don't come to this, bro. That's tough, man. No cap. Jesus. <laughs> Just leave it. Make sure you know the the definition of words before you use them, because you know knowledge is power, and a lot of you niggas is weak, bro. That's a bar too, right there. <laughs> hey, hard for certain niggas to comprehend, though, bro. I agree with you, bro. Like, just the from the education system to the society, bro. Just it's so popular to. I remember, bro, growing up, bro. You know, we was kids. Like, I thought it would be a clown. I thought it was cool to be, you know what I'm saying, goofy and need help and shit like that. But as you... But as you age and as you mature and shit like that, you realize, like, bro, like, nigga, the people that is actually benefiting is the intelligent people and the shit that's really thinking shit through. Not just going with... You can have fun, but, you know, make intelligent decisions and shit like that. You're going to benefit the most from it. So, like, just yeah. shit like you saying, bro. Like just shit like reading, bro. Niggas just want to just get lazy and just look past that shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, being literate, man, it promotes altruism, man. Being unselfish, concerned because the welfare of others may definitely benefit from your understanding of the world and your actions. So. Don't be a crook. Read a book. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> oh man, Jerry, close us out, bro. All right. So hey, once again, man, I want to thank our boy Matthias, man. Once again, man, for for coming oh, on the man. show. Man, this is uh, this has been a great episode, man. We was glad to have you on. Thank you for your time and stuff coming on. So yeah, she was uh, far as that's concerned, man. She uh, our um, I guess hopefully in the future our sponsor will be Word Genius, and man, we out for this episode, man.